Hello everybody and welcome back to another exciting episode of Mugga Play. I am Nick. Today we're playing a game called Dissolving. It was a free game on Steam, so I am curious about it. I still visit my ex-boyfriend. Don't do it. He used to be a total bore, but he was cute and good-hearted. I'm identifying with that a little too hard, but you know what? What? It's neither here nor- this isn't about me. Always ready to put off his plans to help his friends. Aw, seems like a cool dude. Always willing to advise, he used to speak passionately about programming, but before long, this good guy had to go. Oh, There was only a boar left sitting in front of his screen. He didn't finish his fourth university year as soon as he left his job in the office. His online work lasted a bit longer, but in the end, he abandoned that as well. Don't give up on your dreams! They're your dreams! They don't give up on you! At least I hope not. He dwells in a decrepit flat in a bad neighborhood. A generous gift from his parents. They're quite rich, so I guess it's not a problem. That's how he lives. Alone. No job. No friends. No interest. That's no way to live. You gotta, you gotta have those things. People, people matter. Jobs are important. And interests, that's what keeps you alive. Only endless arguments with people on the net. Yeah, don't spend your time having arguments with people online. When was the last time you heard someone online say, you know what, your viewpoint is correct? It doesn't happen, at least not often. Well, I'm not really sure if they've e they're even people or not. How else can anyone be stuck there for that long? It's possible he's been desperately arguing with bots, algorithms simulating neural networks. All in all, I felt a kind of responsibility for his situation. Some time ago, I decided to be close to him. Funny, I don't hold on to the past, but to my decisions. The last time I was there, he was staring at his screen, even more languid, pale, and thin than usual. Sometimes, it seemed like his outline was starting to blur, just like a ghost. A rough sketch of the fabric of reality. He was unusually nice, but then when having a free moment from his screen, oh, yeah. He even gave me an envelope containing cash for my birthday, which was last month. Hey, that's, that's, that's nice. But again, it seems like this guy's gotta start taking better care of himself, and if you're not taking good care of yourself, then you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta. The sum was quite significant, and the best explanation from him was a shrug of his shoulders. Just, eh. I mean, that's generous and all, but, yeah. You gotta, again, you gotta take care of yourself. Nothing. Just found my thing. Okay. Your thing? It's been over a month since then. I'm here visiting him again. The same elevator, still out of service. The same stairs. The same music in my headphones. Dim and deep, yet beautiful doom metal. A great fit for this old hall. He replied okay to my message about visiting. I pressed the doorbell. Just beep boop. Oh, there it is. It takes some strength, like the bell hasn't been used for some time. You just gotta beep boop. Anything? Nothing. He's not home? I like the shirt. Weird. I can't imagine him being outside. Was that him? Again? Come in. Oh. Can't even come to the door? Come on, man. The door is open. Wait in the living room. Busy at the moment. What are you, were you in the middle of a raid? You playing an MMO? Because that requires friends. Or at least teammates. That I would consider an acceptable excuse, but what? He didn't forget how to walk, did he? There was a certain SP episode. A certain special episode? I'm not sure what that means. Uh, super pooping episode? If you're in the bathroom, that's one thing. That, that I totally, again, that I totally get. Reasonable reason to not be able to answer the door. Be like, sorry, I'm super pooping. Spooping. Suddenly, I'm not too keen to come inside. It might smell like super poopy. <laughs> I don't know. I digress. I pull the handle. Oh boy. For a second, I thought this was going to be like Doki Doki Literature Club when it's like, I slowly open the door. And if you've played it or you watched my playthrough of it, then you know what happens after that. The door opens heavily and creaking. The hall isn't lit. The doors to the living room and kitchen are open. I can see in the dark that his bedroom door, wooden with no glass parts, is shut tight. I hit the switch. I was afraid his power's been cut, but the light comes on, revealing the floor covered in dust balls. Silly me! He lives online, of course he pays for the electricity. You know, 
I, I didn't even think of that, but it, hey, it, it makes sense. You gotta have your internet bill, and you gotta have your electricity bills all up to speed before you can play online. Take off my shoes and enter the living room. Silence. There's no light coming from under his bedroom door. Instinctively, I reach for the switch and hit it. There you go. Let's turn some lights on up in this biz. The fixture fix... The, that's a tongue twister. The fixture flickers as the lights come on. It seems like I still remember where things are here. The dust is more noticeable under the light. I'm glad he doesn't have any plants. They would have withered a long time ago. Wait, I don't recall this lock on the door. It's easily seen under this light. Looks like the newest thing in here. I couldn't have entered, even if I wanted to. Hmm. Somehow, I'm not too crazy about this. Sorry, not going outside. Let's talk like this. Well, then why the shit did you invite me to come over if you're not even going to come out? It's 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 okay. It's your, it's your place. You can come on out to your own place. Great. Just great. I saw a situation like this in a movie. It didn't end well. Fine. I'll reply. Why aren't you coming out? Come on out. You won't like how I look. Don't want to frighten you. Really? Because you already failed. <laughs> I'm already frightened. What's wrong? Is there something I shouldn't see? Well, you, you got... You sick or something? Haven't showered or had a haircut for some time. My lifestyle's had an impact on my body. Well, then maybe you should do something about it. Like shower and get a haircut. Well, you can do... If you want to just start fresh, just... Just, you know, take some, take some, uh, take some trimmers, just buzz your whole head, start fresh, take a shower, you'll feel right as rain. Flesh is weak, and, okay, okay, do you have like a, do you have like the fucking hantavirus or something? Is your flesh falling off in chunks? That I can understand. I can't decide if I want to run or argue. I told him the solitude would drive him mad. His messages seem to have been stolen from poorly written songs. <laughs> okay. Wait, he never listened to music. Stop. Collaborate and listen? He'll think that's a new song. You can tell him, but why don't you want to talk normally? Can't you move your tongue? He just pops his head out. There, you happy? <laughs> I'm glad you came. I left you a gift as thanks. It doesn't answer my question. The white envelope on the drawer. Please take it. There's a gift and a note. Uh, uh, okay. I take a look at the drawer by the wall. The envelope is there. The only thing not covered in dust. Is it money again? I don't like this. Should I just go? No. I want to know what's going on. Maybe there's something else in his room. Good on you for looking out for your friend. Or no one at all. It's not grounds to call the police yet. But he's been so strange these last few years, he could have easily gone mad. Well, it's good that you care for your friend. He could be dangerous. No, I can't leave. I can't abandon him like this, but I'll grab a knife just in case. Uh, okay. And try to coax him out of his room. I quietly enter the kitchen, typing a message. You didn't answer my question. Why are you being like this? His reply comes as I pick up a knife. Even the kitchen looks abandoned. I haven't spoken to anyone for a long time. I feel uneasy. Well, you're, you're talking to me just fine. There's no going back now. I have the knife behind my back. Okay, let's do it this way. If you come out, I'll take the envelope. Oh, okay, there you go. I just think using your thinking noodle. Deal, but take the envelope first. Fine. If you do, I'll come out. I don't want to take it. When he comes out, he'll see the envelope is still there. I could hide it somewhere, but that's... Just put it in your pocket, and if he doesn't come out, then you put it back. That's all you gotta do. Gosh, just take the stupid envelope. It's just cash, that's all. I put the envelope in my bag, holding the knife in my other hand. Not very convenient. There, I have it. I have it, see? It's a little, just a little give and take. Fine, but don't say I didn't warn you. As long as you're not like an HP Lovecraftian, like, thing that's gonna make me go mad as soon as I bear witness to your corporeal form, then I think we're, we'll be fine. Well, surprise me. Oh! Oh! That is surprising! I step back. The knife falls out of my hands. I hear a mechanical voice. I told you you wouldn't like it. 
I start to back away. This music, though. This music is fucking awesome, though. He stands there in the doorway. The longer I look, the more blurred his outline is, and the clearer his mouth and eyes are. I turn and run! As I leave the apartment, I glance back. I only see his mouth and a pair of eyes. Oh. I don't remember returning home. I must have immediately fallen asleep. That's how my body manages stress. It dreams full of anxiety. I saw an eyes and a mouth without a body. It was probably too much for me, because I don't usually dream. It's been a day since I visited my ex, or the thing in his apartment. What was it? A prank? Did someone put me on, put on a silly mask with a lighting trick? Was I hallucinating? Or... Damn! I don't know how to approach this, or what to do. I don't know how to carry on. When such a thing ha when such things happen, I want to huddle up in a corner. This is why I tend to act impulsively, just to avoid anxiety. That's how you avoid anxiety? Acting impulsively is what intensifies my anxiety. But, you know, to each their own, it's what else. Perhaps my future actions will be just as impulsive. I used to believe that it's better to know. In these situations, it's best to start with a conversation. Wow. Yeah. I guess. I mean, it is good to start with a conversation. And maybe we'll continue that conversation next time on Mug and Play. Thank you so much for joining me. This game is it's got me hooked. I want to see what happens, and I want you to see what happens. So you should tune in. And if you liked what happened in this episode, you should poke that like button right in the eye. Uh, leave a comment below telling me, you know, what, what do you do to manage your anxiety? Does acting impulsively help, or does it make worse? And, you know, what, what do you do? Personally, I like to, you know, I like to listen to upbeat music. Uh, I like to uh, go online and stream, because that's hanging out with all my friends. And, uh, obviously, doing this, doing this helps me relax. And if you want to see what happens, as well as if you want to see what happens in the other games I'm playing, you should hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a dang thing. Click on the bell, too. Most people who are like, smash the bell, punch the bell in the face, give it an uppercut, it'll, you know, just, you can just click on it. It's gentle. It's great. And that'll help you. And like I said, I enjoy streaming. And if you want to hang out with me while I stream, you can check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash mug and play, or play games online live for your entertainment and for mine as well. But this has been fun. I want to I want to see what happens here in Dissolving. And so check back and I'll post a, a part two. But thank you so much. I love you all. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Take good care of yourselves. Drink plenty of water. I <laughs> don't